It wasn't until the four-track machines came into use and more sophisticated bounce machines that we got really down to the nitty-gritty of making high-quality sports highlights, which is what I specialised in, very quickly to a very high standard. Um, still using one of these, effectively. A few more bells and whistles came along with a, with a later version called the uh, 2000. So when one inch came along, that revolutionised that. Match of the day, in those days, with the video disc, you edited your match, you left the holes, you had to wait for the video disc to become available to drop in the slow motions. As soon as one inch came, you could do it all yourself on the front panel. With these, you could do it on here. You could drive the slow-mo from here. You could teach it to, to slow-mo. You could motion. also learn. If, yeah. you, if you had half an hour, you could teach it to learn. Otherwise, normally, you just do it, do it with your finger. You just became adept at driving the tape. If you want to freeze on a particular point and go on, you could do all that, drop it in. Everything became much more flexible. The productions got better, more sophisticated, but that's what technology did for you. Increasing technology, increasing program complexity and speed as well. Things could happen a lot faster. But yes, we dealt with, um, with little um, camera DV tapes was another thing we used to use on Ski Sunday for the downhill run where Graham Bell would, would um, have his little camcorder in his hand and go screaming down the mountain with his little camera and he would talk, he'd hold it like that and he'd, he'd go, oh, here we come, come out the tunnel jump now, oh, oh, this is good, and he'd go on down and he'd go, and that tape would come back to Television Centre and I would stick it into the suite with one of these and make the downhill run for the Sunday transmission. Um, so that was a sort of a, so we needed a machine that could play DV and if we, um, normally we would copy that onto a beta SP or to one inch so that it could stay in the library and not get lost because the DB tapes are so tiny. But that's just another advancing technology needing to get that material into a format so you can get it out on the air. And that was working with sound on two inch tape. Became a little bit easier on one inch because we had more soundtracks to play with. You could play sound up and down, mix in this, mix in a bit of that, easier. Come to here with an edit controller, much easier. You could dingle your sound, put it where you wanted on any of the four tracks if you had a four track machine. Um, and you, you just got used to mixing the whole thing. We would make stories and then uh, your Alan Hansons would want to talk over that story. Wouldn't we didn't have razor blades now, no, we were in the modern era. So we would dub, they'd go into a dubbing booth and we would mix the sound in with the original meeting, perhaps meeting music points, perhaps meeting sync sound, getting all that to work. And that's why videotape editors were quite actually proficient at dealing with sound because they'd done it from square one.